Intel's 14th gen. Holy crap, I'm excited. Also, I'm excited about the price drops on 13th gen. What the heck is going on? Google's getting me excited with the AI wars going on. And you want a small Windows 11? Let's get you excited about that, too. I'm your Brett host. We're going to get in the hottest tech news that I can find on the Internet because this is hot news or something. I forgot my own intro, but we're going to be talking about the things that's making me forget things. And that's the fact that Intel's looking really freaking good. We're getting some details coming out about their 14th gen Meteor Lake setup that's going to be coming out supposedly later this year. And it's going to exceed Raptor Lake, which is the current 13th gen by quite a bit. So the big numbers that we're looking at is 50 percent performance per watt improvement. This is coming out from a well-known leaker of Raichu saying that that is what Intel should be able to bring out with that. And considering the fact that 14th gen is supposed to be a laptop mobility processor, that's going to help for extended battery life as well as better performance coming out of these chips in a way that we haven't seen in a while. AMD recently with their Zen 4 launch only achieved 25% performance per watt improvement. So year on year, that's a really good jump. But then on top of that, the integrated GPU, this is what I get the most excited about in APUs and handhelds in getting this faster integrated GPUs in the mobility sector. I mean, we talked about this in the episode of Hot News about NVIDIA quitting the very low end discrete market with the MX250, MX350. Those are no longer necessary because the marching of power continues to happen in the integrated GPUs. And according to this, Intel should have an integrated GPU that should be about twice as fast as what you can get right now in 13th gen, which should make it actually really, really competitive with the upcoming RDNA 3 integrated GPUs that we're expecting. So 14th gen's looking to be a massive improvement for Intel, not only in terms of these numbers that we're talking about, but also in terms of approach. One of the big things that AMD has been doing with their CPUs and GPUs has been building them out on chiplet architecture, which has allowed them to decrease the cost as things get more complex. And Intel is going to be taking that approach here as well. We will be getting chiplets on 14th gen, but also the GPU is not going to be an integrated GPU or a discrete GPU. Intel's calling it a T GPU or a tile GPU, which is going to be a new approach that they're taking to how they bake the graphics card into the actual chip that's going to be included on your next generation laptop. So this is really exciting for a lot of reasons, hearing that behind the scenes things are marching forward. Intel's already confirmed that this will still be coming out later this year. Now we're starting to hear some performance numbers coming out about it, and it's looking pretty gosh dang good. And a couple of things to note, it should still have the hybrid architecture that we're used to right now with P cores and E cores up to 14 cores in 20 threads. The GPU is going to be based on TSMC's five nanometer nodes, and this should be the first CPU based on Intel's four, which is their seven nanometer EUV. So we're moving forward in all of that. I am hotly excited for Meteor Lake. Let me know if this is something that gets you all nice and riled up down below in those comments. Well, I tell you about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by ProtoArc and a mouse that you should really check out, especially if you're into traveling. This is their all new hub mouse, which allows you to have so much functionality in a small, sleek form factor. I've been using ProtoArc peripherals for months now. I have the ProtoArc EM01 always on my desk, and this is going to be always in my backpack to go on traveling because it is a two in one design where it actually has a hub baked into the body of the mouse itself, which is a three in one hub, which allows you to connect via USB C and then you get a charging port. You get a 4K HDMI port as well as a USB 3.0 data transfer port so that you have at least the bare necessities of whatever you're going to need while you're traveling on the go. You can charge your device at up to 60 watts. Again, it's a 4K HDMI port and you got high speed data transfer going on as well so that you have the perfect lightweight and small scenario for anything that you're doing while traveling. And it has some great mouse features as well. It's got a 300 milliamp hour rechargeable battery, which supports two full months on a charge and six months on standby mode. And it has ProtoArc's feature that I absolutely love that allows you to connect up to three different devices, one via the dongle and then two via Bluetooth so that you're not just stuck using whatever you plug the USB into. You have options. I think the ProtoArc modular hub mouse is a great innovation. I actually really enjoy this. I think you will too, especially if you travel a lot and you need something sleek and minimal to go on the go with you. You can check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to ProtoArc for sponsoring this video. Thank you, Passbrett. It took
took a hot second to get that ad approved and ready to go live, but uh, you know, we got there. I, I actually really love the hub mouse, so I still have it. I'm still using it. Thank you, ProtoArc, for sponsoring today's video. But that's not the end of the Intel news that we have because China is getting their Intel exclusive CPUs. The 13.7950F and 13.4950F are gonna be exclusive Chinese versions of what we are getting here over in the US. So they look to be roughly the same as the 13.400 and 13.700, but have some key improvements that honestly, number one, I would, I would want this. Okay, number one, it's a black box as opposed to the blue box. I like that. Intel, give us this. The number two on top of that, it looks like these iterations are gonna have clock speed increases, roughly two to 300 megahertz higher than the Western release and more cache on the chip, which is typically assigned to faster gaming. So these things are going to be better. The price point's gonna be coming in a little weird. The 13790F is gonna be $11 more expensive than the 13700F, but the 13490F is actually gonna be $10 cheaper than the 13400F. I don't know what to do with that. All I know is that we have hot tech deals. But before we cut to Reese, I need to know if he's worth his salt because if he doesn't talk about these in UFD deals, we might have to consider another person to get it done. Micro Center currently has deals going on for the 13th gen CPUs from Intel. You can get a 13700K for 330 bucks. You can get a 13900K for 530. And you can get a 13600K for $250. Are you kidding me? That is a great price. You can also get some savings when it comes to the 13700, 13400, and 13100 chips in case that's your bag. But Reese, don't disappoint us with the rest of the deals. Hey friends, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. I'm Reese. I have deals. I also have sore legs from gym yesterday. Now, almost didn't do this episode standing up, but deals. Starting off with the ADATA XPG Premier 16 gig kit of DDR5. This set is running at 4800 MHz at CL40 and is going for only $52.99, which is $87 off. You don't always need fancy looking RAM with RGB. I kind of like this blacked out PCB look. It's just simple, it's clean, goes perfectly in a blackout build. And then second, we have this MSI Mech Radeon RX 6600 XT, which you can pick up for $259.99 if you use the promo code to get an extra $75 off. Limit three per customer, so pick up one for yourself, one for your little cousin, and one for grandma to play bejeweled at higher refresh rate and like always the links to all these and more will be down in the video description down below and with that i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers so there's a little competition there between me and reese with ufd deals now there's going to be more competition in the ai space google officially announcing that they're going to unveil bard which is their chat gpt competitor or their natural language model competitor that's supposed to just deliver you great answers in succinct formats and scours the internet for everything so they're going to be talking more about about this on Wednesday at their Google Presents event that's gonna be taking place in Paris, but Bard is essentially supposed to be their conversational AI service. Google's kind of shown off a few glimpses of it here and there, not necessarily Bard, but what they're doing with AI conversation. They've tried to show it off during their Google I.O. events of it making phone calls for you. That never really rolled out because it was kind of crap. Hopefully the text language model does a little bit better, but Google announcing that this will actually be rolled out into search Microsoft already rolling out OpenAI into Bing, but if Google starts implementing these changes into the search engine that most people use, I could see you know, Microsoft not really getting an upper hand just because they integrated OpenAI, but Google explaining that Bard should be able to deliver natural answers to questions. So they showed an example of saying, what new discoveries from the James Webb telescope can I tell my nine-year-old about? And then it lists a few things that you could actually tell your nine-year-old about it, which is kind of exactly what a lot of people are using OpenAI for when it comes to just describing their answers in natural speech. That's what people want to use it on the search side. We'll have to see if it has the expansion of capabilities of open AI or what Google is planning on implementing. But I do think the conversation of what AIs are gonna be used for, who's gonna take charge. There's been a lot of statements of Microsoft getting ahead because of working with open AI, but Google has always kind of been a secret driver in this space. They're the ones who developed TensorFlow, which is what a lot of the neural networks are built off of. They invented the DPU or the actual neural network computers that they put into their cloud servers. Google's been working a lot. They just haven't publicly announced a whole lot and this is what Bard is supposed to be but hopefully it can distill large amounts into small amounts for you to consume which is exactly what's happening with Tiny 11. It's supposed to be the Windows 11 that you can take large amounts of whatever the crap Microsoft's trying to service you and distill it down into what you barely need. So allegedly you can run on two gigabytes of RAM only needs eight gigabytes of disk space as opposed to 20 gigabytes. Tiny 11 being based on Windows 11 Pro 22H2 so it has a lot of 
the feature sets that you would normally expect in Windows 11. However, it is shrunk down. It's missing a lot of different apps, but it keeps things like calculator, notepad, paint, and a few others, as well as the Microsoft Store for you to install different things, and that it only takes up 6.34 gigabytes of space for the operating system. And then the remaining apps that were kept were about 1.6 gigabytes. So it's a small amount that gets installed, but on top of that, it should also run great on lower end hardware because of the lesser requirements that it has due to under the hood changes, which makes it so that it can run on unapproved or unofficial hardware. However, despite you're likely gonna hear a lot coming out about Tiny 11 in the next few days, I do just wanna always caution with unofficial builds with things that are not officially sanctioned by the companies who make these products, use them at your own risk. This is not an encouragement of Tiny 11 in the slightest. It's just a neat thing I heard on the internet. And in case you're savvy enough to wanna check it out and not ruin your entire life by entering in data that they might be mining from you, well, be my guest. However, if more people use this, we're probably likely to find out what telemetry services are there or not there. Are they actually reporting back to any given server? We'll find out, but it's not just two gigabytes that this thing can actually run on. The developer is showing that it can actually run on about 200 megabytes of RAM, which is an amount that we haven't heard in quite some time. The dev showing off with a system of only 384 megabytes total. The system still operated when being asked, uh, it doesn't seem really usable. He says it's terribly slow, but it works. We haven't been in the 200 megabyte region in decades. And Windows 11 seems to work on that with Tiny 11. It might be intriguing for you to check out. Again, take it with a grain of salt. Be cautious. Don't just download things on the internet. You wouldn't download a car. Maybe don't download Tiny 11 unless you're gonna practice safe installation, which is not what is happening when you have a Samsung 990 Pro. We've been talking about the saga of Samsung having the lifespan on their popular SSDs degrade well beyond what they're supposed to be doing. The 980 Pro two terabyte being subject to it. The 990 Pro also happening. We talked about an episode of Hot News last week that Puget Systems found out there's a fix. You just need to upgrade to the latest firmware on the 980 Pro. However, that doesn't apply to the 990 Pro because that's not out yet. However, Samsung Samsung coming out and saying that they should have a firmware update for the 990 Pro later this month to fix the firmware issues that are going on that are degrading the lifespan of the SSDs a little bit too fast. And speaking of things that took probably a little too long to come out, MSI officially having their 7900 series GPUs launch. We talked a while ago about how MSI kind of skipped the launch, didn't have any of the reference cards and didn't announce any sort of third party edition until CES. It's been a slow dribble from them on the AMD front, but two months later, here we have the 7900 XTX at $100 price premium and the 7900 XT at a $50 price premium for the third party cards. In case you're interested in checking those out, we'll have links in the video description for you. And I am describing the end of hot news because it's now.